Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And I have just watched the Qatari Grand Prix, as I'm sure you have as well. And this was an interesting one. And there were a lot of little caveats. And it was very hard to judge who has performed well and who hasn't. This was a very, very strange race. And obviously there was a lot of racing this weekend because we had the sprint race as well. Uh, Sergio Perez again might be the unluckiest man on the grid but he now cannot officially catch Max Verstappen so Mighty Max is your free time champion which is not surprising and the Constructors is sealed up as well so there's five races left and not a lot to watch for. Lewis Hamilton can still catch Perez I mean if Aston Martin have a sudden upturn in form Alonso can catch Hamilton as well the Ferraris are around there. Miss McLaren's are climbing up. Russell's on and off. So I guess the middle of the pack is where it's going to be interesting. Ferrari versus Mercedes for second place is, I guess, where most of the drama is going to come from for the rest of this season. But other than that, uh, Red Bull pretty much done everything. All they need to do now is make sure Sergio Perez finishes second. Um, but I do think this race was... A lot more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. But I think for very artificial reasons. Issues with the tyres meant they had to change them every 18 laps. So that meant a lot of pit stops and a few divergent strategies. Which I think made the race a lot more interesting. So if it takes every car having three or four pit stops to have a good race. Maybe that's something Formula 1 should think about because I think this did at least produce more options for teams to try and find a way to gain places with strategy. And if you look at it, Alfa Romeo scored points for both cars for the first time in ages. And that might point to the fact that the Alfa Romeo it may be a bit harder on its tyres than other cars, and when you drag everyone down to their level, they can actually mix it. Both drivers did very well, Bottas and Joe, so... I think that Alfa Romeo, they wouldn't mind having this 3-4 pit stop race every round. Um, obviously the big controversy was Russell and Hamilton colliding at the start. I think Hamilton has taken the full blame for it, as he should. It was, again, I guess the tyre situation maybe caused it. But Hamilton did not give Russell enough room and he got tagged. I'm surprised Russell continued because the fact that Hamilton's wheel came off must have been a heavy impact and it's um, honestly it's a miracle that Russell finished the race but also that he finished in fourth which was an incredible performance from him and that means Mercedes still outscored Ferrari which is what they needed and Ferrari will be especially disappointed that Carlos Sainz could not get out and I think it was a fuel system problem big disappointment for them really hurts their challenge for second other than that, it was nice to see some new teams in the points. It's been a long time since we've seen Alfa Romeo, or both Alfa Romeos up there. But this race was heavily affected by penalties, and this is maybe the biggest gripe I have with it. Um, it's as, a, some, as an audience, and Formula One's biggest audience is its TV audience. Obviously, not there's quite a few people out of track. It's like a quarter of a million, but there are millions watching at home. As an audience watching at home, it's not entertaining for cars to get penalties for track limit violations. It would be better if there was an on-track penalty that we could see, visualise it. Something like, if you just chucked a load of sand out there, or gravel trap, a bit of grass, fake turf, anything. Something that would slow the drivers down. Even those stupid squiggly lines they have, a, it's not what Magna calls, is it Paul Ricard? Something to slow the cars down when they run ride, rather than have time penalties. Because time penalties are not entertaining to watch. And you should not have to wait half an hour after the end of a race just to make sure the actual finishing classification was the finishing classification. Because I thought Joe finished 10th. Perez finished 10th. He got a penalty. As did Gasly and Stroll right at the end. So the finishing order was not the finishing order. Although it was for the lower places, so maybe it doesn't matter. But throughout this race, penalty, penalty, penalty. Qualifying was loads of penalties. And it's just well, deleted times. It's not entertaining to watch. If you put a gravel trap out there, drivers would have to be more careful anyway. 
or at least we get to see them make a mistake. I'm not saying it has to be like a car ending mistake. Like if you put a wall there, maybe I wouldn't agree so much. I mean, you have the tight walls of street circuits, but that's kind of special for street circuits. At a circuit, you could do something that would visually aid us in seeing that the car has gone off track rather than time penalties. And I don't think it takes a big brain to figure that out. And honestly, I don't have a lot more to say. As I said, this was a strange race. The strategies meant that the uh, order in the top 10 was constantly changing. There weren't necessarily a load of overtakes, but there were some really good ones. Uh, Norris pulled off a great one on Leclerc. Saw a couple of good ones from Russell. So at least we saw on-track overtakes. I'm not a big fan of the Qatar circuit, and I question why they are racing in Qatar, a country that doesn't have a lot of motor racing heritage. And I don't think this track was necessarily very suited to single-seaters. It looks and feels like a GT track. And I know MotoGP races there, but heat was an issue. Logan Sargent retired because he was not feeling well. Apparently Esteban Ocon vomited in his helmet on lap 15, which is both disgusting and worrying. If it's too much of an issue to race there, they shouldn't race there. And surely someone at the FIA can realise that maybe it's a bit hot, maybe there's not a lot of reason for us to go here. I'm guessing that the organisers or someone in Qatar paid a lot of money for them to be there which is why we are racing in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Abu Dhabi. A lot of these Middle East tracks, they're never very entertaining to watch because the tracks are lame. And I just, I would like to see at least two of them go away. Just have two, yeah, I don't like Bahrain. I've never liked the Sakir track. And I'd be quite happy to see that disappear. And honestly, this Qatar track, I don't think it needs to be on the calendar either. The calendar's far too long. We do not need four races in the Middle East. I wouldn't be that sad to see the end of Abu Dhabi. It's the best of the Middle East tracks, I think. And I'm still not that big a fan of it. And this Qatar track, I think, is on the calendar for at least another five years. And this wasn't an unentertaining race. I'm just not a big fan of the track. The conditions obviously didn't suit the drivers very much. And at this point in the championship, everything's pretty much tied up already as well. So we're heading back to America next in a couple of weeks. Uh, there's only five rounds left. The calendar makes no sense to me. We're going from Qatar to America, Mexico, Brazil, which, okay, that's fine. Back to America, and then over to Abu Dhabi. Why would you not put at least these two American races together? So have Las Vegas, Austin... Mexico, Brazil, and then have Qatar, Abu Dhabi to finish out the year, or have the Middle East rounds before the American rounds. I would actually be really happy to see the season end in Brazil. Or America, really. But we're going to just drag this out. They're going to fly all over the place. And there's even more races next year. Uh, sometimes Formula One is a bit of a drag. And I think there are some really easy solutions to making it better. And I think it's going to be a long time before we see any of these solutions implemented, if we ever do. And on this channel we have discussed many times what those issues are. But if you want to tell me in the comments what you like about Formula 1 and what you don't like, feel free. I will obviously still cover it because I do enjoy watching Formula 1. It's just, it's not always very entertaining. This weekend, I've watched the Bathurst 1000, and I've watched most of the Indianapolis 8-hour race, and I haven't watched British Touring Cars yet, which I'll probably do after this. And sometimes you get great racing, sometimes you don't. But Formula 1 is consistently disappointing, and this weekend, it wasn't necessarily boring. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense for him to be out there, and there's not a lot of reasons to really root for anyone anymore because everything's kind of done but it'll carry on i will continue to do it so make sure you subscribe to the channel it's so very close to a thousand now and that is shocking to me 
But if you can subscribe and get me there as quickly as possible, I'll thank you a million times over. So thank you for watching and have a good one. Wait, 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 sit back down. The recording got messed up and I'm having to do a bit of it again. Mostly just the Oscar Piastri stuff I talked about, which I'm gonna to cut out completely and you won't have seen it, so I don't really need to tell you what it was about. Oscar Piastri was the absolute star of the Qatar Grand Prix. He won the sprint race, which is incredible. I don't know if that counts as a Formula One win in the record books, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, and if it does, it shouldn't. But he then finished second in the race, which is obviously his second second in a row. What a fantastic driver he is. McLaren have a pair of fantastic drivers. If they can keep this level of performance going into 2024, I think they could be a threat to Red Bull. I don't think now that they're that far off. I'm very, very excited for the future of McLaren. I think other stuff got messed up and I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure it was hugely entertaining and definitely worth your time. But because you can't hear it, you just have to pretend that it was. So subscribe and thank you for watching and have a good one once again.